Hi, this is the lecture three of our series on data communication and computer networks. In our last lecture, we studied about the network edge in detail. In today's lecture, we will study about the network core and we will see what are, what is packet switching and what is circuit switching in detail. So let's move forward. Okay, so having examined the internet's edge, let us now delve more deeply inside the network core, uh, which is the mesh of packet switches. Uh, which is a mesh of packet switches and links that interconnects the internet and system. So you can see over here, this is the mesh of interconnected routers over here. So uh, these links which uh, that you're seeing in front of you, these links denotes the physical media which we studied in our last lecture. So th th these links can be, uh, it can be guided physical media or it can be unguided physical media. So uh, you can see over here, uh, we have a mesh of interconnected routers. So over here as well, we have the mesh of interconnected routers. So in our last lecture, we were studying about the network edge. Today we are present, we are present at the network core. So network edge, if you recall, network edge included the end systems, the end devices, as well as the applications. Today we are present at the network core, which is the interconnected routers. Okay, to uh, send a message from, let's suppose uh, if we want to send a message from this end system to this end system over here. Uh, let me... Okay, suppose this end system wants to, sh uh, wants to send message to this end system right here. So to, uh, to send a message from source end system, in this case, this is the source end system. Let's denote it with S and this is the destination end system. Let's denote it with D. So to send a message from source end system, uh, which is this one right here, to the destination end system, which is this one right here, the source breaks long messages into smaller chunks of data known as packets. So this, this source right here, this source will break longer data, long chunks of long messages, long data, into smaller chunks of data known as packets. Keep in mind the data can be uh, in images form. The data can be the images. The data can be in the video form. The data can be the video or it can be, let's suppose, mp3 it can be audio files so don't confuse with this messages word written over here so uh, it's not necessarily uh, that we are sending we are sending the text uh, messages so the data can be images it can be videos it can be uh, uh, mp3 files uh, it can be uh, long uh, audio files so this long this this huge data this big data the images the videos the mp3 files the audio files the big movies you know they will get in they will get converted into smaller chunks of data known as packets so we won't we will never send the data as it is we won't send the, the whole videos the whole images the whole mp3 files as it is they will first get converted into smaller chunks of data which are known as packets in the computer networking jargon. So only then they will be transferred to uh, the internet. <clears throat> okay, let me remove this ink from over here. Okay, so to send a message from source uh, end system to a destination end system, the source breaks long messages into smaller chunks of data known as packets in the computer networking jargon. Then we have a concept of packet switching. So have you ever imagined how does this data, let's suppose we want to, uh, this this end system or uh, this end system over here, it wants to send data to this end system over here. It wants to send data to, to this end system over here. So this data will uh, will be um, forwarded to, or this uh, the, the data will be forwarded to this network over here. So uh, these interconnected routers, it is the job of these routers to transfer this data to the destination, to transfer it from source to destination. Okay, so let's see what is packet switching. Uh, let me, okay. 
So let's suppose we have a router over here. So let's suppose this one over here, this is a big picture of this router. So this router has the incoming links. Let's suppose these are the incoming links of the router. And these are the outgoing links of the router. Okay, suppose we have a packet arrived at the link one. We have the data packet over here. Let's suppose this is the packet. So the packet has arrived at the link one, this, this link of this router. So the router now has to decide the outgoing path for this packet over here. So whether this whether this incoming packet destined for destined for this outgoing link, outgoing link number one, whether it is destined for outgoing link number two, or whether this is destined for outgoing outgoing link number three. So let's suppose uh, it is destined for outgoing um, uh, outgoing link number three. So we will transfer or the router will transfer this packet to the outgoing link number three. So this phenomena, this phenomena is known as packet switching. Or uh, remember packet switching is a local function. We will study about this uh, in detail uh, in the upcoming slides. Okay, so let me remove this, this ink. Okay, so network forwards packets from one router to the next across links on path from source to destination. This is known as routing, whereas the phenomena which I have just uh, taught you uh, is known as packet switching. So there are two fundamental approaches to moving data through a network of links and switches. Um, one is circuit switching and the other one is packet switching. So let's study about the packet switching and circuit switching in detail in the upcoming slides. Okay, so uh, there are two key network core functions. So right here at the network core, there are, there are two key functions happening all the time. So one is forwarding, it is also known as switching. And the other one is known as routing. So uh, keep in mind, forwarding or switching, it's a local function, it's local to router, whereas, uh, whereas the routing, it's a global function. Let's understand the switching first. Okay, every single, uh, keep in mind, we are examining the network core. Imagine we are present at the network core. So uh, since the core is, the mesh of interconnected routers. So we have these interconnected routers over here. Always remember every single router has a table known as forwarding table, just like this one over here. So every single uh, router has a forwarding table implemented inside it. So this routing table would have local forwarding table, then uh, it would have header values, it would have certain outgoing output links. So every router, in the network core has these uh, these routing sorry these forwarding tables okay so local action what does this switching means what does this forwarding means what does this what what does this uh, mean okay move uh, the the, uh, the purpose of switching or the purpose of forwarding is to move arriving packets from router's input link to appropriate router's output link so let's suppose we have a router, or let's suppose we have a packet arriving over here. So we have the destination address in packets header. So what the forwarding table would do, it would match the headers address present, uh, present at the present uh, um, written in the uh, packets header, it would match with this, this table over here. Let's suppose we have so the, so this forward ta forwarding table will uh, would match the the address over here with the addresses implemented inside this table so let's suppose we have this 0111 this this address matches with this address over here 0111 
and then the router will look for the output link, which is two in this case. So now the router will forward this packet to the uh, outgoing link number two, this, this link over here. See this? So now this packet is transferred to outgoing link number two. So this is uh, this is known as forwarding or this is known as switching. It is local to router. This is a local function or a local local action. So move move arriving package from router's input link to appropriate router's output link is known as forwarding. Whereas the routing, it's a global action. It determines the path uh, from source to, from source to destination taken by the packet. So you can see this this longer path taken by this uh, this packet from source to destination. This is known as routing uh, remember routing algorithms are there to uh, do the routing tasks uh, we'll study about this routing algorithms in detail later in this course okay so here is a real life analogy for for understanding the concept of routing since routing is a global action suppose someone wants to go from uh, san jews to northampton Northampton. So uh, the path taken by the person from uh, San Jews to Northampton is known as routing. So this is how the routing is a global action. Whereas the forwarding or whereas switching, it's a local function. It's in this case, in this real world analogy, it's it's local to city. So you may uh, you can uh, see over here the person may uh, un may move at different roads to let's suppose we have this main highway over here in order to get to the main highway to reach Northampton we need to uh, change different paths uh, which uh, which in this case are roads to get to the main highway so this is uh, this is analogous to analogous to uh, routing. Sorry, forwarding. So forwarding, you can see is uh, is a local action. Okay, then we have uh, in the, uh, let's uh, study about the store and forward phenomena. Every single router has this store and forward phenomena. Uh, what does it? What does this store and forward means? It means the router. This is the router the router will not forward or will not transmit the packet to this link un until it receives the full packet so uh, the router will let's suppose we have let's suppose this is a, this is the packet number 1 so the source has started sending the packet 1 to the router so let's suppose this router over here, it has received only one bit of the router. Sorry, uh, of one, one bit of the of the packet. So the router has received one bit, but it has not received all the bits of this packet. So the source hasn't finished sending complete packet yet. So this router over here, it will not send this packet until unless or it, it receives the complete packet. Only when it receives the complete packet, it will send it to this link over here. So this is known as store and forward. Uh, routers first store the, uh, they first completely receive and then they store uh, the the packet and only then they forward it to the link. So uh, packet transmission delay, what is packet transmission delay? It takes L over R, L is the size of the packet. We have uh, studied about this in our last lectures. L is the size of the packets and R is the link transmission rate. So it takes L over R seconds to transmit or push out L bit packets into link at R B, uh, bits per second. So it would take uh, the packet uh, from uh, source to destin from source to router L over R. So the delay would be L over R. And from here to here, we have L over R. And the complete delay from source to destination would be 2L over R. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the store and forward uh, concept. 
Store means uh, it, it it only means the router will first store the the packets and then it will transmit the packets into on onto the links. Okay, then uh, the entire uh, uh, entire packet must arrive at the router before it can be transmitted on next link. Okay, so here is one hope numerical example. Let's suppose we have uh, the length of the packet. 10 K bits and then the link transmission rate as 100 MB per second. So if you divide L over R and divide it by 100, you will get 0 0.1 millisecond. Okay, so let's talk about queuing. Suppose these incoming packets, the packets are arriving faster, these incoming packets they are arriving faster than this outgoing um, links capacity. So queuing occurs when work arrives faster than it can be served. So these incoming packets are arriving faster than they can be sent to the outgoing uh, link. So uh, what would the router do? It would store these incoming packets um, and the uh, and the router will only send those packets and the router or the router will only service uh, those packets only when it has finished sending these packets so queue of packets waiting for transmission over output link always remember the router has uh, let's suppose the router has received the complete packet so these are the complete packets so the router has received the whole the complete packets they are ready to uh, they're ready to be sent but uh, we have uh, you can see the link transmission rate equals to 1.5 mb per second so the link transmission rate of this outgoing link is 1.5 mb per second whereas the link transmission rate of these uh, these incoming links is 100 mb per second so the so the work is arriving faster uh, the packets are arriving faster than they can be sent to the outgoing link so we would have to store these packets so every router has a buffer. Every uh, every router has a buffer storage, which is attached to the outgoing links. So we will store these packets inside the router's buffer. So this concept is known as queuing. Queuing occurs when the work arrives faster than it can be served. Okay, if arrival rate in bits per second to link exceeds the transmission rate being uh, uh, bits per second of link for some period of time, so the packets will queue, uh, they would have to wait to be transmitted on output link. Keep in mind, these packets can be dropped. We can uh, lose these packets if memory, uh, the buffer in router fails out. Okay, so there is an alternative to packet switching, which is Circuit switching. In circuit switching, we have the the end to end resources, the uh, um, the end to end links, they are reserved. They are reserved for call between source and destination. Let's suppose we have uh, this. We have four links over here. One, two, three, four. So we have reserved this link number two over here, and we have reserved the link number one over here so we have reserved the pass or we have uh, reserved the links in case of the circuit switching so in diagram each link has four circuits call gets second circuit in top link and first circuit in the right link dedicated resources no sharing in in the case of circuit switching we are not resource we are not sharing our resources so the resources are dedicated that means they are already reserved and when they're not in use, if the resources are not in re in use, they will remain idle. So circuit like guaranteed performance. Circuit segment idle if not used by call, no sharing. So commonly used in traditional telephone networks. Okay, then multiplexing. Multiplexing allows the transmission of several signals over a common channel. Recall access networks when we were studying about the DSL and when we were studying about the cable-based access network, uh, if you remember, the DSL uses the same telephone line. We studied that the DSL uses the same telephone line 
and the splitter at your home, it is its job to split the data and the analog signals. So uh, in case of the cable-based access networks, if you recall, if you remember, we started that the cable-based networks, uh, they have the coaxial cables, coaxial cable. Coaxial cables. So the same coaxial cables are used to transmit both the TV signals as well as the data. So how do we uh, split? How do we split the both the signals? So the answer is multiplexing. So multiplexing allows the transmission of several signals. Uh, in this case, in the case of let's suppose uh, um, cable-based access networks, multiplexing allows the transmission of both the TV signals, which are analog signals, and the data signals over a common channel, in this case, coaxial cable. Okay, so then there are two types of circuit switching or multiplexing. Uh, one is frequency division multiplexing, and the other one is time division multiplexing. Keep in mind, in frequency division multiplexing, we reserve the frequencies. Let's suppose these are the frequencies reserved for the users. So we have divided the frequency for the users. Let's suppose uh, this user, this blue user. Okay, uh, wait. Each call allocated its own band. Each call has been allocated, allocated its own band. Can transmit at maximum rate of that narrow band. So this is the maximum band for this user over here. So it can transmit at maximum of at maximum of this band, this frequency. Okay, so let's suppose uh, this user, this blue user, can use this frequency spectrum. Um, let's draw it this way. So this frequency or this band has been reserved for this user over here. Whereas this frequency or this uh, division of frequency has been reserved for this user over here. Okay, then we have time division multiplexing. In the, in the time division multiplexing, we divide the time into slots. So you can see we have divided the time into slots, different slots. So each call allocated period, periodic slots can transmit at maximum rate. So in, in, in this case, you can see the uh, they can transmit at maximum rate, uh, maximum rate of wider frequency band during its time slot. So this first slot is booked for this blue user. The second slot is booked for this. A green user and then the third one is booked for the yellow and this one is booked for this user and again uh, this one is booked for the the blue user okay so i have attached this picture for your better understanding uh, you can see over here let's suppose this is a coaxial cable for your understanding let's suppose this is a coaxial cable so we have this uh, in in the frequency division multiplexing we have different frequencies. So you can say this frequency, this frequency is different from this frequency, and this frequency is different from this fre uh, frequency. We have three different frequencies in this case. We have divided the three different frequencies. So this frequency is used for data. And so this frequency is reserved for the voice purpose, and this is for the video. So this is the same channel, oh, okay, sorry. So this channel, this is the same channel. So we are sending the data, voice, and video over the same channel. I suppose it's, it's, it's a coaxial cable. So this is the concept of multiplexing. So in uh, time division multiplexing, we divide the time. You can see this. So we have divided the time. So this is the concept of uh, uh, multiplexing, uh, time division multiplexing, and for, uh, frequency division multiplexing. Okay, now, which one is better? Packet switching or circuit switching? Let's take an example. Suppose we have N users sitting behind this, uh, this router over here, and the link transmission rate is one GB per second. 
So how many users can use this network under circuit switching and packet switching? So we have one GB per second link. Each user, when active, it uses 100 MB per second. And only, uh, the, so the users are active only 10% of the time. We have one GB per second of this link. And we have N number of users And we have n number of users. Each user uses 100 MB per second when active and only 10% of the time they're active. So how many users can use this network under circuit switching and packet switching? So let's suppose we are using circuit switching. So in case of circuit switching, if you divide, uh, since we have, a, we have the link rate of one GB per second, which is 1000. And each user uses 100 MB per second when active. So if you divide 100 to 1000, you will get 10. So at a time, 10 users can use this circuit, uh, 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 use this network over here. Okay, let's suppose we have 35 users. In case of uh, packet switching, let's suppose we have 35 users. So now the probability that at the time or, or at a time only 35, uh, sorry, only 10 or more, you can say 11 or more. The, the probability that at the time 11 or more users are simultaneously active is 0 0.0004 which is very less. So that's why packet switching is far better than uh, circuit switching. Okay, the only time, the only time this, this, uh, this, ne this network will make issue, like uh, the only time this, this network will make issue is if we have more than 10 users. We have talked, we have seen that uh, we at a time we can use uh, at a time 10 users can use this network. I repeat, we have seen that at a time 10 users, 10 users can easily use this network. The only time we will have problem is when we have more than let's let's say let's say we have more than 11. More than or equal to 11. The only time we will face problem is when we have more than 11 persons actively using this network. When we have 10, we have seen that 10 users can easily use this network. 10 users can use this uh, network simultaneously. The only time this network will make issue or the only time we will face problems is when we have more than 11 users, 11 or more than 11 users active at the same time. So the probability, the probability of 11, 11 or more than 11 persons being active simultaneously is 0 0.0004, which is very less. So this is why packet switching is better than circuit switching. By the way, uh, if you have studied the statistics and probability course, if you have an idea about the probability, so If you have, if we have a probability of zero, zero means unlikely event. Zero means highly unlikely event. And if we have a probability of one, then it means highly likely, likely event. Likely event. So zero, if you have a probability of zero, it, mean, it means highly unlikely. And if you have a probability of one, then it means highly likely. So you can see the probability of uh, 11 or more than 11, 11 users actively or uh, simultaneously using this network is 0 0.0004. It means highly unlikely. So how did we get this value? If you have studied the, the statistics and probability course in your, uh, at your university, so you should take it as your homework and you should um, uh, find out this. Uh, uh, find out how how did we get this zero point triple triple zero? Sorry, zero point triple zero four value. 
Okay, so before moving forward, let me move the ink. Okay, so um, packet switching is great for bursty data. Sometimes has data, uh, data to send, but at other times not. In case of circuit switching, um, we have reserved resources. We reserve the resources. So if you have data, so the, the resources will be used. But if you don't have data, the resources will remain idle. So it's a shortcoming of circuit switching. So in case of packet switching, it's great for bursty data. Sometimes has data to send, but at the other times not. So it means we're not reserving. We're not uh, reserving the resources. So resource sharing in packet switching, we can share the resources. So it's simpler. Uh, we don't uh, we we don't have to set up. You know the the call setup is not uh, present in this case. So excessive congestion possible packet delay and loss due to buffer overflow. Uh, protocols needed for reliable uh, in case of packet switching excessive congestion is possible so when more and more packets are coming when we have a very huge amount of data or huge amount of packets coming so we can face the packet delay and loss due to buffer, buffer overflow so we need protocols for reliable data transfer and for the congestion control we will study about these protocols we will study about the reliable data transfer in very detailed and about the congestion control in very detail later in this course. Okay, so if packet switching better than circuit switching, which in which 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 uh, in actual it is, so it's complicated. So how to provide circuit like behavior with packet switching? So the answer is it's complicated. We will study various uh, techniques that try to make packet switching as circuit like as possible you will study about these techniques later later in this course okay so this is it about this is it uh, for today's lecture we will continue um, with the rest of the topics in uh, in our upcoming lecture so if you have any questions if you have any suggestions do let me know in the comments section down below and don't forget to share uh, these videos uh, share this channel with your friends uh, thank you so very much